Hi everybody, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about this device. You can see it's fairly small if you've never seen one, and that device is the Stride Power Meter. I will try and remember at the end of this video to put in a link to more about power meters if you're going, well, what the heck is a Stride Power Meter? I don't even know what that is, but maybe give it a little bit of an overview right now. So first of all, you know, running is usually about effort. And the reason I say usually, there are times when the speed of running is important. But for most of our workouts, it's all about effort. And there's a variety of ways that we get at effort. You can use perceived effort, you can use pace, you can use heart rate, you can use a power meter. There's a lot of ways that you can try and say, am I training at the right effort? So the question is, when you're using a power meter, is it better at getting the right effort more often? Because it's not better at getting the right uh, effort more often, then why would you want to do that? So I've been an early adopter of Stride. I had one of the original chest strap versions that they sold on Kickstarter. I think it's probably been about four years as I'm recording this since they've had that. And they've made some tremendous steps forward. But some of the concerns, if you will, that I had about Stride is that there was a lot of futzing. In order to try and get to your right power zones, there was some futzing that you had to do to get there more than what I thought the average runner was going to be willing to do. Uh, it didn't adjust for conditions. It adjusted for some, but for others, there was no adjustment for the conditions. And conditions matter when you're out there. And then finally, data overload. I mean, Stride provides you with just a ton of data. And I find a lot of people would just get enamored by this data and frankly distracted by it. So the data is still there, but try not to get distracted by it. At least at first, you can look at it later. But when somebody comes, hey, I'm going to work on my vertical oscillation. Well, vertical oscillation is probably not what you want to be working on. You really want to be working on the right effort and, and doing some other things. So before I get any further, I want to say we're all an experiment of one. And when I say that, when I talk about, it, I guess, especially adjusting for conditions, conditions affect different people differently. But no matter what chart you use, no matter what's out there, you have to always figure out what's best for you. So there's always going to be guidelines out there. And then you figure out where you're on the guidelines. So when it comes to training, getting the right effort, the vast, vast majority of people train by pace. So looking for a specific pace. But pace is going to be impacted by heat and humidity. Pace is going to be impacted by the wind, hills, and altitude. Now, you can see I've got a big check mark by hills. So Stride has always been really good with estimating what's going on with hills. And so if you're in a hilly area, Stride was going to help you get to the right effort more often because it did a great job with hills. I put kind of a little tilled mark by altitude because even though there's nothing currently there that adjusts for altitude, Chances are, unless you're traveling around a lot, you're training in the same altitude all the time anyway. So it's really not going to affect your performance day to day because if you're at 3,000 feet, you're at 3,000 feet. If you're at zero, which is pretty much where I am, I, I'm at zero. But heat and humidity were always factors and the wind was always a factor. So hence, um, wind stride version three. So their latest version that is coming out the end of July 2019 is going to detect for and adjust for wind, which is pretty big because there's not really much else out there that will do that. So uh, DC Rainmaker, if you followed any of his blogs, uh, he does a lot of tech reviews. He has reviewed this in a wind tunnel and has generally found it to be fairly accurate. So the jury, of course, is still out. The devices haven't started shipping, but it looks like they have figured out how to make adjustments for wind. And that is whether the wind is coming in your face, alongside, it's behind you, it would automatically adjust and factor that into the power. Meaning if you're supposed to be running at say 250 watts, if you're starting to run into a headwind, it's gonna show that, hey, you're at 255, you're 260, your effort is going up because of that wind and your job is to dial it back or conversely, if that wind is pushing you along, you might be down to 245 and say, gee, I can go faster because I got a tailwind at my back. So Stride apparently has the wind thing figured out. I'm sure they'll get better and better at that as time goes. Then you got heat and humidity. So right now they have a spreadsheet where you can figure that out, which again is a little bit of futzing, but they have a spreadsheet where you can go in and say, hey, here's what the temperature and humidity is. How would I adjust? So if it was 250, it might say, hey, today I think you should be at 242 because of the conditions outside. I'll again go back to we're all an experiment of one, whether or not that's a right adjustment for you is hard to say, but at least it's an adjustment. And I think it might be a future feature. Now, I should say I have zero insight into what they're thinking about in the future. I do know that in the version three, they have a temperature sensor and a humidity sensor in there because that's part of how they're testing the air pressure, which is really how they're getting at the wind. So to me, it seems reasonable that down the line, they might actually have some adjustments for heat and humidity because they've got the sensors built into the device. But whether or not that's actually going to come true, again, I don't have any idea. 
So as far as the conditions go, it looks like they're really getting that nailed a lot better for us. Now, another part of the futzing was that everything was based upon a critical power test. So you would do a critical power test in order to set up the zone so you get the right effort. The issue with the critical power test is I've had several athletes that have been training with a stride and I've never had anybody ever do a critical power test where they felt like they did it right. They always felt like, you know what, I was supposed to be to max effort by the end. I don't think I was there. Or, boy, I went too hard and I faded at the end, so my effort was wrong. And as a result, they never, ever trusted that the zones were correct. And if you can't trust that the zones are correct, then you're questioning the effort, and, and that's a real big deal. But they've got kind of a fix for that now, too. And this is on all strides, not just the newest version. And that is called autocritical power. What they're doing is they're analyzing all the running that you've been doing, and they are saying, based upon all this, here's what your critical power is. And if your critical power should change, they will automatically update that for you. You get a push notice on your phone saying, hey, we've updated your critical power. Uh, this has changed. Now, speaking for me, I can tell you that for me, their auto critical power is, I think it was one watt different than what I had for my power otherwise. So at least in me, my experimental one, it was very accurate of what it should be. So that takes a huge amount of the futzing out. I think that goes a long way towards helping people trust that they have the right zones. The other thing they released is Power Zones in Run Mode, which is a Garmin IQ app. You do need to have a fairly current version of Garmin IQ. I'm not sure exactly what ones support that. But in Run Mode, that's where you can set a data field on your watch so you can see what your power is. But what the power zones do is, first of all, they stay current. So if your auto critical power has changed, it's automatically going to get sent to your watch so you have the correct information. Now that field will not only show you what your current power is, it will tell you what zone you're running in. Now, it's a fairly small font, so my old eyes don't necessarily see that really well. I guess I could get around that by going to more than four fields. But in my run today, I was trying that out. I wanted to be in zone two, and I could see not only what my current power was, but it told me I'm in zone two. So I thought that was a nice feature, and again, helps take some of the futzing out that you don't have to worry about it. It's more an automated thing. But when all is said and done, what it really comes down to is, you know, am I going to get the right effort more often? And with this latest version with the wind, I think the answer to that is yes, you would get the right effort more often. Does that mean you need to go out and buy one? Absolutely not. All you really need is a stopwatch and effort because you can be your own judge of what effort is. But if you're into technology and really like to dial in on those things, I think that stride is something you should be considering.